Hi guys, welcome back. Today I want to discuss a highly requested topic that is how to safely treat acne during pregnancy. My name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm starting a new series about skin and hair care during acne. As you guys know, I'm currently expecting in my second trimester and acne is one of the most frequently asked concerns I get as a dermatologist in my practice as well as on my social media. So let's tackle this topic today. I'm going to share with you the overall just ingredients that are safe to use as well as what you can do at home as well as when then you should see a dermatologist. So first and foremost, acne flare-ups is one of the top three skin concerns that we see around pregnancy. There's a lot going on with our body and skin and certainly hormones do play a role. Now, when it comes to pregnancy, a lot of things that we normally would prescribe are kind of off the table, especially depending on where you are at with your pregnancy. As far as what we can do for acne during pregnancy, first and foremost, number one is if you do struggle with acne, acne before getting pregnant, making sure that your acne is well controlled prior to pregnancy can be very helpful. When we talk about what are available options when it comes to treating acne, first and foremost, topicals are going to be the safest. In general, topical medications, whether it's ingredients over the counter or prescription, are really going to have limited absorption through your skin and they're going to be what your dermatologists are going to recommend to you to use. So when it comes to medication, whether it's for acne or other conditions, we don't have a lot of good studies in pregnant moms because it's just, it's really hard to do understandably. So what we do know really comes from maybe previous retrospective reviews or animal studies. It doesn't necessarily correlate with true safety in humans. We know that there are categories of safety, like FDA has designated categories, like A and B are pretty much safe. Pregnancy X is literally, you know, a no-go and everything else is kind of great in between. And as far as like what is truly safe kind of has to do with what you're using, how often you're using them and how extensive of use you're putting on your skin. What we do know is that what is truly X and should not be used, taken during pregnancy for acne is oral vitamin A, so Accutane. We know that truly causes birth defects. And really that is where the theoretical risk of topical retinoids come into play. Certainly there are some case reports that may suggest, but again, other studies that shown it doesn't really harm. But because of that potential risk, most dermatologists, I would say pretty much all dermatologists recommend avoiding topical retinoids. And certainly most moms would rather not take on that risk. So the topical ingredients that you can find over the counter that are safe to use are number one, benzoyl peroxide, azelaic acid, and your hydroxy acid. So here mostly alpha hydroxy acids. So your glycolic acids, your lactic acids, mandelic acids, and then polyhydroxy acids because because they're such a big molecule, they won't penetrate into your skin. With the caveat that salicylic acid can be safely used, it just depends on the type of product, the frequency of use, and the quantity of use. Now, when it comes to prescriptions, then topical antibiotic, for example, prescription clindamycin, erythromycin, metronidazole are going to be effective and helpful. Benzoyl peroxide, if you guys know me, you know that I recommend benzoyl peroxide as a cleanser, the short contact Contact time helps to fight acne, but also minimizes irritation. So that is where I recommend adding a cleanser into your routine on a daily basis. And the two products I recommend when it comes to cleansers are CeraVe Acne Foaming Cleanser. This is a great gentle one, so ideal for those with more dry and sensitive skin. And then the one from Neutrogena, Clare Pore Cleanser slash Mask. And I like this one great for more oily skin because it does have kaolin clay that can help to absorb some of the surface sebum, but you can also use it as a leave-on mask for a little bit longer if you need additional treatment. Both of these are really great. It has benzoyl peroxide at concentrations less than 10, 4% for the CeraVe, and then 3.5% for the Neutrogena. So these are concentrations that we know are effective, but less irritating. Now, if leave-on products is your jam and you really find it to be helpful, you can certainly check out the one from La Roche-Posay, this Effleurade Dual that contains 5 
5.5% benzoyl peroxide also contains a more gentle form of beta hydroxy acid called lipohydroxy acid. And with these, I recommend spot treating. I certainly don't recommend putting it all over your face because it can be very irritating. Next, azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is a wonderful ingredient because it's one of the few that is really safe to use during pregnancy. And it not only helps with acne and rosacea, which is what I prescribe as a dermatologist, but also helps with hyperpigmentation, which I know many of you also struggle with during pregnancy, whether it's melasma or your skin's just a little bit more sensitive and prone to hyperpigmentation because of the hormones. Now, when it comes to treating hyperpigmentation, melasma, and acne or rosacea, I'm really talking about the prescription strength that's gonna be the most effective, 15 to 20%. So these are gonna be the ones prescribed by your dermatologist, your provider. Now, certainly there are a lot of formulations over the counter. We don't really have really any studies in those percentages, like 10%. Certainly, I think if you're not able to see a dermatologist right away, there's no harm in trying these. It just may not work as effectively or may take longer to work, but they're overall relatively low risk to try, but just understand that it's not going to be the same as prescriptions and really prescriptions are where the money is at. But if you are looking for a good azelaic acid product, one I really recommend is from Naturium. Azelaic acid 10%. This is really nice. Naturium is a brand that I really like. They're very much conscious of the products that they use, how it's formulated, very much environmentally conscious. It's vegan and also contains niacinamide, which we know is another ingredient that kind off the label has been shown to help maybe with a little bit of acne and sebum control. So certainly the two can work together gently to help with your skin and acne and maybe even some of the uneven skin texture and skin tone. The other one that I like too that is very popular is from Paula's Choice or 10% azelaic acid. However, that one does have 0.5% salicylic acid, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. It's still certainly safe to use, but again, just depends on how much you're using on your skin skin and how frequently you're using it. For most people, azelaic acid is used twice daily and predominantly all over the face. So with that, you may want to just be mindful because again, when it comes to salicylic acid, really the frequency and the quantity can potentially affect its safety. The next set of ingredients are the class of alpha hydroxy acid. So your glycolic acid, your lactic acid, and your mandelic acid. So these are traditionally fruit derived acids. And what they do is they really help with exfoliation and uneven skin texture and skin tone. So here, even though they're not truly targeting acne, the fact that a lot of the acne pathogenesis has to do with clogged pores, it may help indirectly by increasing your skin turnover. And certainly alpha hydroxy acids can also benefit with the post acne marks and also can be an ingredient that you can safely use to help target some of the fine lines and wrinkles and be a part of the anti-aging skincare routine for expecting moms. One I actually, I really like is from Maturium, their mandelic acid 12%. And this is nice because mandelic acid is great for those who are more acne prone, but also helps with hyperpigmentation, really helps to target hyperpigmentation. So this is where you kind of can kill two birds with one stone, help with on your even skin texture, dullness, but also hyperpigmentation. Other more affordable options, there's one like from Verse, their overnight peel, I believe, as well as a more pricier one I've been really loving lately, Medic 8. I think that it's called their overnight AHA peel. That's just a really nice gentle one that's great for mostly targeting fine lines or wrinkles, but can certainly help indirectly with acne. Another one I really like is from CeraVe, acne control control gel. This contains a blend of glycolic and lactic acid, but also be aware it does contain 2% salicylic acid. So here it's more about how frequently and how much you're using, but certainly this can be safely used on the skin if you're mostly using to spot treat. And then if you have more sensitive skin and wanting to have an option, check out, again, Naturium has a line of gray hydroxy acids. They have the glycolic overnight. They also have a polyhydroxy acid serum. They they have the mandelic acid serum. So that's an option for you, the polyhydroxy acid serum. Otherwise, if you are looking for an lactic acid serum, more suitable for sensitive skin, I've really been loving one from Peach Lily, their lactic acid repair serum that contains lactic acid, ginseng, and other plant-derived ingredients are suitable during pregnancy. So you can certainly check that one out. So now let's talk about salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is an ingredient that can be used during pregnancy. I know there are some confusing information out there. This is the 
theoretical concern with salicylic acid. We know that salicylic acid, which is in the same family of chemical compounds as aspirin, when it's applied to the skin in large quantities on a regular basis, especially in the context of psoriasis, there is absorption into the skin, past the skin into the body, anywhere from like what's quoted in literature from like nine to 17%. The theoretical risk here is that there is a potential for salicylate poisoning. So like basically taking too much aspirin, but it's a theoretical risk. And this amount of absorption past your skin into your body is really only been demonstrated when it's used to treat psoriasis or rashes where the patient is using large amounts of it all over the body on a regular basis. Now, salicylic acid, when it's used in limited quantities, meaning like to spot treat pimples here and there, or just apply to limited surface areas on a regular basis, or like as a cleanser that you wash off because the contact time is just too short, is most likely safe. So that is what I recommend when it comes to treating your acne. Also keep in mind that OBs will give expecting moms aspirin even during the first trimester for certain issues. So it is one of those, again, theoretical risks that we just will never be able to prove, but again, all theoretical. Certainly cleansers are always the safest. And if you cannot use benzoyl peroxide for any reason, or if you want to use another cleanser in your routine to help with acne, you can certainly pick a salicylic acid cleanser. You can certainly try the Neutrogena acne cleanser that's in that yellow bottle. If you have more sensitive skin, feel free to check out the one from Cetaphil that I've mentioned before. They're a gentle, clear, mattifying acne cleanser that contains 0.5% salicylic acid compared to the Neutrogena one that's 2%. It's more of a creamy cleanser, so more ideal for those with more sensitive and dry skin. I certainly feel that spot treatment is 100% safe spot treating as needed instead of putting it all over your face. Going with this one from CeraVe or even like, for example, this one from Tula that contains 2% salicylic acid. Again, you guys, it's really kind of like the dose that becomes a toxin, if you're just using it intermittently as needed, where you need it, you're perfectly safe. One thing you want to avoid is using moisturizers or products that you're gonna be putting on your skin regularly all over your face or your neck or your body that contains salicylic acid. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, niacinamide is an ingredient that is very safe in the sense it's not very irritating for the most part. Most people tolerate it really well. It's an ingredient where you can certainly entertain into adding into your routine just make sure that you go with a strength that's appropriate. So usually like, you know, the concentrations between four to 6%, two to, you know, two, four, 6%, usually the 10% can be more irritating. And certainly there are lots of great products out there, but one that I really like is from Vichy, their probiotic, mineral 89 probiotic that contains 4% niacinamide. So this one is something you could certainly add into your routine. Now let's talk about the oral treatments available. And these are mostly going to be prescriptions, but I kind of just want to give you guys an idea of what you dermatologist may give you for really severe cases. Oral antibiotics, which a lot of expecting moms may get during their pregnancy to treat infections or urinary tract infections, what have you, are typically the ones that we would give you. And they mostly work, again, anti-inflammatory, may help a little bit with reducing the bacteria burden on your skin. Certainly it's not going to cure your acne, but for a period of time, if it's really severe, that can be used. This is where you just need to have a conversation with your provider to understand and like what would be the risks and benefits. Now, zinc supplements have been discussed and have been described to potentially help with acne, whether you're pregnant or not. There are some literature on zinc for acne. We think zinc helps with, again, inflammation. It's anti-inflammatory. Overall, zinc supplements is one of those relatively low risk supplements where hard to overdose and really doesn't cause a lot of complications. Again, I think this is something you need to discuss with your provider first, but certainly that is something you could consider taking and may help for your acne. Okay, now quickly, I want to mention some of the in-office procedures that are available that's safe. Number one, our in-office chemical peels, mostly alpha hydroxy acid based peels. In-office peels are a little bit more effective because they're often stronger. And so obviously comes with a little more downtime, but again, something to discuss with your provider. There's also LED light treatment that you may see like those LED acne wands or at mask, but in the office, the lights are a little bit more powerful powerful in treating the acne. And certainly that is some, another option you could discuss with your provider. Lastly, for those really bad, painful cystic zits, there is intralesional Kenalog injection that can be done in office. We would inject a pimple and literally will shrink down by the next day. And that's how it works. It's taking advantage of the anti-inflammatory
inflammatory effects of the steroid. When it's injected locally into your skin, that's where it stays. Doesn't go inside your body at all, at least not with the amount and the strength that we use. So certainly it's not ideal as a acne treatment but for those emergency moments where you're just having a really painful cystic zit and you just won't go away that can be a very quick and easy fix lastly i just want to comment that if you have recently discovered that you you are pregnant and you have been using topical retinoids rest assured that most likely your baby is fine certainly you should stop as soon as you have discovered that you're pregnant but what we do know from all these meta-analyses of patients that have accidentally exposed themselves to topical retinoids in the early parts of pregnancy is there's really no harm to developing fetus with these accidental exposures. All right, guys, so that is my quick and dirty on how to take care of your skin, how to treat your acne safely during pregnancy. If you have any questions or if there are any other skincare topics during pregnancy that you would like me to address, please comment below. And again, you can find more of me and more skincare information on my social media accounts. And I would love it if you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys next time. Bye.